Hello everyone, welcome to Tabletop Cinema. For those of you that are new to the show, what we do is review clips from movies, TV shows, and the occasional video game, and determine the roles and mechanics that would be needed for the scenes to play out on a tabletop. I'm your host, Josh McGinnis, and we have with us, as always, members from the Dungeon Studios team. Let's go over to the team and check out who we got. Tonight, joining us, one of our writers here at Dungeon Studios, Mr. Aaron Fire. How are you doing, Aaron? G'day, guys. Thank you all for joining us for today's episode of Tabletop Cinema. <laughs> good to have you, man. Next up, Mr. Shane McDowell. How's it going? It's good to be here. Awesome. Then we're going to scoot on over to Mr. Tigan. Hey, man. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Next up, Merwin. How's it going? It's good. As I parted with the neck beard today, I looked in the mirror and had a revelation. Fuck, I am ugly. I don't know what I did to God in my past life, but I really pissed him off. <laughs> All right, next up, Mr. Content, Sean Carroll. What's up, buddy? Hello, and welcome, everyone. It's a pleasure. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, of course, I've assembled you here to review some clips tonight. Uh, we're going to start off with a uh, little clip where the uh, pirates meet the mermaids uh in pirates of the caribbean um oh. so uh so. I've, i always liked that clip i thought it was a pretty cool clip so here it is on here um have you guys seen the pirates of the caribbean oh yeah oh yeah nice nice i've, I've seen the movies i don't remember this one though gotcha okay all right well maybe it'll refresh uh, real quick is this the movie where uh they're trying to the mermaid tear and the fountain of youth and all that you I guys know so. yeah okay. oh the one with the Spaniards? see that was the one i didn't see oh yeah crazy. duh duh of course it is because mermaids okay I, I got <laughs> let's have a look uh well before we uh review the clip i need you guys to go ahead and grab your favorite d20 Oh, this one hasn't been nice to me lately, but let's Oh, go. Mordecai! Mordecai the dip die! Oh, you All know. right, gentlemen, you we're going to go ahead and roll an initiative. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and uh, give those dice a roll, and I'll go around and we'll see what everybody gets. Aaron, you're first. What'd you get? Five. A five. Okay, Merwin. Rolling hot today at 14. 14, okay. Nice. Uh, Sean. A solid three. The divine number of the Holy Trinity. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Mordecai's speaking volume. <laughs> Ty, what'd you get? I got a 17. 17, okay. And Shane. I got an 11. An 11 for Shane. Ooh! Above awesome guys so we got our initiative order so uh without further ado i guess let's dive right in and check out this scene oh yeah look at that dinghy <laughs> it's full ah oh, yeah this is the fourth one Uh oh. Hell no. Oh, damn. Hello. No, that freaked me the fuck. No, sir. She would have got decked right in her fucking job. You think so? Okay. What would have punched the fuck out of that one? Ah, there's Sean. We found Sean on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, right away. <laughs> Straight for the dagger. This, fucking this killing, seems man. so unrealistic. We know that the guy piloting the boat there, I mean, there's no greater weakness for a strong black man than a pasty white woman. He'd be going nuts right now. How's he ignoring her? <laughs> no, man, kill it, dude. Oh, shit. Where are you gonna put your dick? Are you my jolly sailor boy? I mean, you wouldn't, like, try it a little? No. I'm sure there's a dolphin hall he could put it in shore. There ain't much been given to me in my brief, miserable life. There's a truth in it. But by God. I'll have it said that Scrum had himself a kiss from a proper mermaid! 
Shut up, ba! Oh shit, they're hungry. Bitches always be traveling in packs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, they're all captivated yeah. now. Then fucked up. Let her sing her song. See, should have just killed her, man. Yeah. Like any woman that has like a mermaid tattoo likes mermaids. And... Oh god! Like I've never liked mermaids. Oh shit! Yeah. What would you expect? Oh, that guy was on it. He wasn't fucking around. Oh! Oh! Damn! Yeah, they're coming out of the water like cart. It has begun. Oh shit! Damn! Oh my goodness! They're gonna feast. They're gonna feast. Oh my god, this is like a rock. Oh, just getting dragged down to the deep. Ugh. Oh, guys. That is a pretty gnarly scene. Oh my god. So, uh, we're going to go to the top of our order tie. Uh, you identify anything in there that stood out to you, mechanic wise, DD wise? Uh, yeah. Uh, at first, they were good. Like, as far as like the one dude, like, hey, you know, pretty lady. And then they all failed that wisdom save once she started singing, and then that attracted the other ones. Yeah, they, they, they were they they were not good in any part of the scenario. Okay, so you're gonna say that's like a like a wisdom save that those guys are doing. Once, yeah, once the first mermaid started singing, wisdom save, all of them failed, and then that attracted the other one. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's go on over to uh, Merwin. Well, good to be second. Well, yeah, we got the uh, <clears throat> the initial perception check. Some people failed, some people didn't start noticing what's up, and then we get to this point here where players aren't really sure if they're good or bad, so we have a little conversation, we have an insight check, we have a terrible failure, and everybody thinks it's going to go so well except for that one guy, and then Man. disaster comes. So we're saying that one guy is the one that's passing his perception checks? I think I think it'd be intuition, or uh, yeah, maybe maybe intuition, the suspicious player, and then you get into the saves when they start, you know, singing and swarming around and whatnot. At that point, though, it's too late. It's okay. game over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, then you have the uh, end of it is just your underwater combat, holding your breath, and uh, a slow, cold, watery doom. Yeah, pretty much. That's what that's what most of those guys got there. Shane, you, uh, you got a good a good one. Here? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I agree with Ty. That was definitely a wisdom save. I would say there was just the song. Um, that guy that pulled out the knife, he could have made a insight check to figure out like you know she was malicious, or he could have just been a murder hobo. You know, either or. It's kind of <laughs> hard to tell. Um. Yeah, no, that was a cool combat scene though. But yeah, the moment you get in the water with the mermaid, you're pretty much just done for, for sure. Um, maybe some deck saves from them jumping out of the water. Okay, yeah, 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 absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I think that that's what happened there. But um 
yeah, I think it's a cool scene overall. I definitely got to watch the movie. Nice, nice. Uh, Aaron, what do you got? So, uh, I'm kind of on the fence as to whether it would be a wisdom save or a charisma save. Because I'm kind of leaning towards charisma save with it being like a song and all that. It could very well still be a wisdom save. Um, growing up as a youngin, though, I've always seen fantasy stuff with mermaids being like good and stuff. Growing up with like the Little Mermaid and shit like that type of stories. And then seeing this and uh, oh. seeing the true like lore of sirens and all that stuff. And then uh, when she goes like underwater and reveals like the fangs and all that shit. That's freaky as hell, especially Absolutely. for someone that's grown up with, like, good mermaid stories. To see that is absolutely terrifying. And, oh my god, the shoulder tackle! Like, one of them flew out like a dolphin and just shoulder tackled the fuck out of one of them. Oh my god, that was actually... <laughs> 10 out of 10. I'd put you in the NRL. Fucking Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. Uh, let's uh, go down to Sean. What do you got? All right. I hate mermaids. I hate them. I've always hated them. I hate the little mermaid. I don't like them. I don't like mermaids. You cannot trust a fucking mermaid. No, absolutely not. D and D related wise, like I'm again that guy who drew that sword and was about to cut that that that. Oh, the mermaid. I, that would have been me. That would have been me. Like right on point. I don't care. I don't care. Naked lady in the water. No. No! All right? I get it. We are men. Don't, oh, don't let it speak. Anyways, I'm with Aaron on it, uh, D&D wise. Uh, I think it would be charisma, because it's like a bardic thing. You know what I mean? Uh, that's, that's what I'm taking from it. Um, I believe while they were fighting, the dude who uh, impaled that foul, wretched sea woman in midair, rolled a 20 when he went to attack. Uh, that was just beastly. But when the boat got destroyed, I mean... I uh, See, I got a question. What kind of saves, like, would that be? I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Mr. McGinnis. Yo. Uh, what do you, what do you think the scenario would be for the guy's trying to get on some pieces of wood you know like as as it's falling apart like like how would how would you as a dungeon master play that out how how they're staying on little pieces of like the 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 broken ship yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like what, what would you have people well roll? they're gonna be doing you know uh contested strength checks and grapple checks against the mermaids that are trying to grab them uh Dexterity checks while you're in the water. Uh, that's going to be a tough one. Uh, oh, you know, there's disadvantage. Absolutely, as to where the mermaid probably has the advantage. So, oh. um, it, you know, it would be ugly really quick, probably. Game over, man. Game over. I told you not to let her sing, man. You let <laughs> her sing, man. Ty, you got something? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I have a question. So that one mermaid that. Uh, too, that just like a dolphin flew out of the air and just shoulder tackled that one guy. Would you say like that guy would have had to do like a strength save or something to not be knocked in the water? Um. So it'd probably be an acrobatics for the the mermaid, a dexterity for the for the guy in the boat. Um. To not get knocked out. Uh. That'd probably be an additional like strength check or something. Okay. No, no. So are we guys are we saying that this is a charm effect? Uh, a yes. charm spell? Oh definitely. I, I yeah. don't think it's a charm. I don't think it's a charm. I think it's more of like a... Because they weren't charm. It was more because it wasn't. I don't. I don't. What do you mean? That, that looked like charm to me. It looked like like the mermaid look, told all of it, them to walk off the ship. I don't think they would have done that. Like it was more of like a like a, a signal, what do you call like a signal to the other ones. Look, it in the sea. Yeah, like more, the guys, it, the it, guys it, leaning it, more in the water, and like he goes in the water before she's like rah. 
and he's like, ah! so I, mean, I mean, he, he was trying to be like, go attack your friends. Like, I don't think if the mermaid would have said that, that would have happened. A well, I mean, this charm is, is come well. in the water so I can eat you. A charm yeah. can also be a distraction, like, oh, pay attention to me and only me. So, like, for example, let's lean towards probably charm person or suggestion. So, suggestion being, keep your eyes on me, look into my eyes and all that, and just focus on my eyes. Because that's what that one dude that, like, got pulled under just before she fired her fangs, he was only paying attention to her. He didn't see any of the other mermaids coming up on the boat. That's where I'm leaning towards. And then... Oh. Sorry? That also applies to the other guys on the boat. Like, while he's getting, like, his face pulled underwater, none of the rest of them do anything. It's yeah, also they've like... all gotten the same... Like, all the other mermaids have come up, and they've each picked a target and gone, I'm going to do it for this dude. But uh, they've done it in a way where they probably have the help action with that one mermaid singing... Um, and then they're just doing like a charm person or a suggestion going off of beauty more than anything because they didn't say anything during that. No, right. man, kill them all. Like I, I don't get, I don't give a shit. I die. Nope. I, if if I meet a woman in real life and she likes mermaids, uh, it, it's an instant dislike of that person. <laughs> I don't trust. Nope. Because because there's that there's that whole. Uh, 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 sexist murdering men thing, man. That's like right there, and it it tells you all you need to know. You can't trust it, man. All right. You can't trust it. So, uh, guys, I think we did a pretty good job there. Uh, viewers at home, uh, if you guys have some advice uh, or comments, drop them in the comments. Of course, if you like these videos, hit the subscribe button. Head over to Facebook. Check us out over there. Some of our other content. Uh, but we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back shortly. Hello, adventurers. Have you come to get your hands on our giveaway? <laughs> if so, put a link in the video description to the Dungeon Studios Discord server. Once there, you have completed the first leg of your journey. Swiftly make your way past the trolls to the treasure vault chat and type in Tabletop Cinema for your chance to win one of eight Icon of the Realms Boneyard Collection minifigure sets. <laughs> and that's it. You have completed your quest. Congratulations. So make sure to bring your radiance against these creatures of the undead. And now, back to the show. Hello and welcome back to Tabletop Cinema. The next scene we're going to be viewing is going to be from the movie Saving Private Ryan. And it is the Malesh death scene. Um, for me, this was a pretty powerful movie when it came out. Uh, it was the first of its kind that really kind of delved this deep into everything. Um, but, uh, of course, let's go over to our team and see what they think. Um, Aaron, have you seen this movie? No. And I'm sure you're all about to berate me about how I need to watch more cinema, but I apologize, and I am a busy man, and Okay, no. can you do me a favor at this point in the video? Can you cue the boos for yourself yes i will cue the boo yes yes bring on the boo yes bring it on <laughs> i know what makes you happy <laughs> um sean have you seen it oh yeah dude it, it blew my mind when i saw vin diesel playing a military man i was like no fucking way <laughs> That was great. It was great. Another good part in the movie was when, uh, uh, oh, the part that's coming up, Buddy's gonna, sadly, uh, spoiler alert, die. He's like, Juden! Juden! <laughs> Juden! And he's pointing to himself. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, Ty, have you seen it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, man, I love this movie. I remember I saw it in middle school. Uh, I've been... Yeah, 
Uh, I remember seeing this in middle school, uh, and I remember just loving every absolute minute of it. Awesome, man. Awesome. Merwin, have you seen it? Uh, numerous times. It was. Uh, it had one of the most accurate and gruesome depictions of the D-Day landings ever. Uh, it's the first, I think, 15 or 20 minutes of the movie. It really sucks you into it. Uh, and then uh, not just a violent war movie, the interaction between the characters and their little stories are really what kind of drives the film. And this, as I, I said before, this is the worst scene in the whole movie. <laughs> Nothing carries the kind of punch that this one does. Cool. I agree. I agree. Uh, Shane, yeah. have you seen it? I have seen it. Um, I always thought like jumping from World War II to Vietnam is kind of weird. I mean, stranger things have happened in history, so in a 30-year time span. So, I don't know. It's a good movie. It's a fun ride. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, guys. Well, let's uh, go ahead and pull out your favorite D20. Becoming more and more my left favorite as we go, but... <laughs> uh, give them a good roll, and we'll go around the room, and we'll see what everybody got. Let's start with I, Shane. Oh. What'd you get? I got a five. Five for Shane. Merwin. Eighteen. I'm on fire. All right. Uh, Sean. I rolled a solid twelve. Okay. The same amount of letters in my first and last name. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ty, Ooh. what'd you get? Uh, because this is my favorite D20, it rolled a nineteen for me. All right. Baller. And Aaron, what'd you get? Two. Come on, baby. Two. Uh, 19 or 15? 19, baby, let's go! All right, oh, roll I off. have to do is roll it for a solid minute. Do a roll off, please. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just. I literally just. Oh, well. Hey, ADHD just kicked my ass. All right, what'd you get, Ty? Go. I got a 15. Aaron? 11. All right. Oh okay, well, we got us an initiative order, guys. So we're going to go ahead, and without further ado, we're going to dive right on into this scene here. Oh shit! Sam, you got any 30 cows? I'm out! I love all the uh, all the war guns in there, that's awesome. He had one job, man. Just pepper him. Up him! Full bang! Full bang him! There we go! Nice. Yeah. Good, nice, fucking good shit. That's gonna end up being an ally now, isn't it? No, he he should have spoke when he was fucking told. Fuck that dude was oh really young. fuck! Oh wow! Oh, oh to the throat! They wall bang back. Oh shit! It's getting real. You gotta love the bullet drop sound on the M1 grenade. Hello. Oh, these guys are duping it. Oh, that's such a slow death the other dude's in. Dude, it. I. Uh, oh. Yeah, he just lit that whole crew up. Yeah, fuck you, kind of bitch. Uh oh. Uh oh, time to move. There it is, and the bullet drop. Uh oh. Oh, he's such a chicken shit. 
I, I, it. After everything he's witnessed, that's what happens. Damn. They did a really good job at representing, you know, close quarters combat, this mm. style, you know, in, in this clip. Totally. It's like, this whole thing is like, genuinely terrifying, which feels like it's probably a good representation of this war in general. Yeah, and the, uh, the, 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 it's like, the psychology coming up here at the end of the clip. It's, yeah. it's one of those things where, like, you, you can't imagine being that hardened that you would do that to another human being, except in the depths of war. Oh, shit. No mercy. Oh, my God. Sounds like he's apologizing or some shit. I don't fucking know. Oh. No, he's telling he's taunting him. He's telling him to be quiet. He's going, shh, shh, just like give it up, just let it go. He's taunting him. It's fucking cold. Dude. Oh, man. It all could have been prevented. Up him didn't. Oh, dude. Yeah! <laughs> Get him! <laughs> I got shot in the cheek! <laughs> yeah, like right there. Yep. Man, don't cry now, bro. You could have definitely said oh, something. Oh, the fucking worst is to come. He just walks right past him. Oh. Oh, my God. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't that the same guy that they let go? Like way earlier. Oh yeah, they uh, had him at like a tower or something, right? Yeah, uh, there was there was a radio tower, and uh, the Germans had like a little bunker over there. I think and so. they swarmed it. He and, and then, he's the one who convinced him to let him go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty deep, man. man. Uh. <laughs> I mean, it's like one of those moments, man, where it's like, war is hell, so does that mean you should become the devil? Right, right, that is brutal, man. man. That is a powerful scene. Um, I'll tell you, that it's, you know, 20, year, 20 years on, it still kicks me in the stomach, and this is the the reason why when you talk to people that were actual combat veterans, they get real weird when you start asking about this kind of stuff, because shit like that is how it was. Absolutely, Dude. man. Uh, let's go to the top of our order here, it's going to be Tygen. Uh, anything stand out, uh, D and D mechanic wise? Anything? Yeah, I feel like this is one of those rare games that has the sanity mechanic in play, and so depending on you know what's happening around the soldiers, aka the players, is how they react. Depending on you know the fear checks, the sanity checks they're making, and at the end, that dude that could have saved his friends, he nat ones and just can't function. Okay. All of the other guys, the guys they're getting shot at, they're making their sanity checks, they're making their fear checks, they're shooting back, they're going through it, and there's that one guy in the platoon that just can't handle it. Okay, that's a good way of thinking about it. Uh, Aaron, you're next up. Um, I agree with that. There's definitely a bit of psychological bullshit going on in this game. Um. The main thing that I can remember is the two dudes rolling around on the floor uh, trying to just constantly one-up each other. A lot of like grapple checks, athletic checks, a lot of stuff going on there. Um, knife at the end being pressed into the dude's chest, that was uh, uh, really highly contested and I feel like they kept like rolling the same shit constantly and then the, that other dude just just managed to one up him by like maybe like one point over or something oh that was a hell of a gnarly scene i agree man i agree uh merwin i try to unpack this and uh build on what you guys said so from a uh a dem standpoint i look at this scene you see a party spread out in a massive combat in different sections you know you expect things to go well and then dice turn against you 
people start getting dropped. The guy gets shot through the hole, doesn't see him coming. You didn't expect to roll that good on damage. Down he goes. And then you get to this last scene here. We have two players who can act. One of them's on that fear shit. Can't move any closer. No ranged options. While a player gets dropped after a fiercely contested close combat. None of this five foot dancing around bullshit right on top of each other. Grapple checks, plunging the knife in. And I feel as a DM, like you didn't expect it to go this way because you expected there to be an extra guy in there. And when it comes to this, it looks like to me, like you keep stalling uh, and having the guy not do attacks while you're on death saves just trying to drag it out that's the taunting i don't want to murder your pc i might come on the other guy's gonna pass his fear check right i don't want to kill you i don't want to kill you and finally three rounds in the guy can't pass the check you just got to do it and down goes the pc and you can just feel that emotional hit because everybody would fix it if they could but the dice and the scenario made it impossible sometimes people got to die and that's the kind of shit you carry with you and the stories that you have for decades that's what i see that's true, man. That's a that's a great way of looking at it. Uh, Sean, what do you think? Uh, yeah. Wow, dude. Spot on. So, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know about the insanity thing, but like definite fear checks. You know what I mean? I mean, it is war though, so like I'm not dismissing it. Uh, then there was um, there's a there, there's the part where uh, Buddy pops out with a uh, with a rocket launcher or a bazooka, and he blows up the uh, little tank. So he hit his target, and then Buddy came out, uh, Jeremy came out, <laughs> and he freaked out. He's like, out of ammo. He didn't check. Dude's out of ammo. He didn't check. Ah, ah. And then they threw the helmet. I mean, that was a throw. It, 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 they, they both missed. And then uh, <laughs> he, he, was, he just he rolled higher on the draw for the pistol. But he just got right under uh, the German. Just got right underneath his roll. Then he got shot in the butt. <laughs> I, th I think that's how that part went down. That was, sure. was my favorite because he threw his fucking gun. All right, he just ran out of ammo, and then shot this guy with his pistol. Got so mad that he threw the only loaded weapon he had. Just saying, fuck it. <laughs> It's like the player getting pissed off like damn it <laughs> uh, uh let's go to shane what are your thoughts here man um well dex builds would be king that's for sure i know some mm -hmm. people would say well dex, dex builds are king anyways but i think like yeah it's something like this where like the main weapon you use are ranged weapons um you want that high ac to be able to dodge bullets and stuff um I think if you wanted a more well-rounded character, like you could go like a rogue or something, like they have the skills to do that. You know what I mean? To be able to jack of all trades kind of type. Um, yeah, a lot of fear checks. I can see sanity. Um, yeah, no, the the improvised weapon of the helmets that 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 is definitely D and D material for sure. <laughs> Come on now, yeah. nobody in D&D ever runs out of ammo. No one keeps track of that shit. <laughs> oh, uh, real quick question, Shane. Were were the pistols that most of them using 1911s? Um, on our side, yeah. Nice. We, we would have like six shooters. Uh, really? 45, yeah. Six, well, World I mean, like... One. Yeah, yeah, World yeah, 45 would be the weapon of choice at this in this era. Yeah, in World War One, I, I remember a lot of six shooters on the American side. Uh, World War Two moving more into automatic pistols. Um, awesome. Yeah, no, there were people using bars and Thompsons. You had um, MP40s on the German side. Pat, 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 roll that. around with a 44 Magnum, right? Yeah, that's what my dad had. 44 Magnum kind of guy. But, yep. Yeah. Um, I know my, my grandpappy was over there. He was one of the airborne troopers. And yeah, he, oh, cool. he had some stuff. Uh, I know he, he had to hide under a tank for a day day or two. Whoa. Yeah. Why? Because oh, he was surrounded. And a lot of his battalion was killed. Man, that's crazy, guys. That is All right, crazy, well. man. You know, uh, I think uh, you guys did a pretty good job. Uh, viewers at home, if you guys like these videos, hit the like button. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with one more clip.
welcome back to Tabletop Cinema. We got one more clip for everybody. Uh, of course, if you like these videos, hit the subscribe button. Also, we got a giveaway going on right now. And if you want to find out the details to that, check out the description. Um, we got our glorious panel of guests with us as well. Hey guys, I got uh, one more clip for you guys to check out this evening. And it is going to be the Gandalf versus Saruman fight scene from the Fellowship of the Ring. Oh uh, yeah. So, Wait, um, don't you mean grumpy old men? <laughs> oh. um, so, uh, Aaron, have you seen this movie? I have seen these ones, uh, but it's been a very long time, so it's not quite as fresh in my mind. I did watch the first Lord of the Rings about two years back, planning to marathon it, and after the three hour movie that that was, and then going into number two and seeing that that was also three hours, I gave up. But, uh, <laughs> trying to rewatch them, but, uh, good movies, in my opinion. Good movies. Good awesome, movies. awesome. Yeah. Tigan? Yeah. Uh, the funny thing about Lord of the Ring, I have a really funny relationship with these movies because I've seen one of them. Um, what? A little bit. A lot of look, man. It's, it's 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 just I like the movie. The movie I've seen, I liked it, but it was long as shit, and I don't have an attention span that long. So I just I I I, I, I couldn't see the other ones. But I've heard nothing but good things about them. I will say that. Okay. Okay. So I yeah. take it you have not seen this scene then. Yeah. The first movie. <sighs> okay, uh, Merwin. Uh, well, as a person who was old as fuck, uh, I remember when these came out in the theaters. Uh, read the books as a kid. Uh, the Hobbit was, I think, the second fantasy book I ever read. Um, launched me on a lifelong love of it. The movies amazing. Uh, even though, like you know, what is was amazing about them though is that there was just uh, a crossover. People that you would not expect to see at a fantasy movie. Uh, were there they were talking about it the next day so you had nerds and cosplay you had kids that lived in the library you had football players old people young people it was amazing because the movies are that good absolutely man i agree with you i agree with you uh sean <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh i have all three movies extended edition just like my good old buddy over there sir shane mcdowell man <laughs> These movies I can watch over. I I watched them all uh, in movie theaters. Uh, I I I love it, dude. Every everything everything about it. And there's a total of four wizards, uh, or five wizards. Five wizards. Yeah, yeah. The whole see, you never know where the two blue wizards are. There's two blue wizards, folks, and they're just never talked about. They okay. just went to the east and they disappeared. All right, mm -hmm. uh, Shane. Um, I've read the books. Uh, I've spent entire days just marathoning all three movies. Yeah, I do love these movies. They're very close to my heart. I probably watch these movies more than any other movie, for sure. All right, guys. Well, uh, without further ado, uh, go ahead and pull out your uh, wait, favorite wait. D twenty. As we are rolling, I would like to state this. In the books, uh, this was information given to me by Sir McDowell over there. In the books, when Sauron turns to Saruman. the dark side, to the Sar Saruman, Sar when Saruman, I was Saruman, like, when Saruman uh, turns to uh, you know sides with Sauron, uh, he then turns into he's no longer Saruman the White, but Saruman the Many Colored. And his robe is right. like, it's uh, like gasoline. Ty, what'd you get? <laughs> I got a 15. All right. Shane. I got 17. All right, Aaron. Give me the heart of the heart of squash banana. I got a fucking eight. Eight. Uh, Merwin. Well, if I had my personal dex bonus, I got a seven, uh, but without that, I have a 12. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Sean. 16. All right. 
Okay, guys, so it looks like we got our initiative order. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right under this clip. Sauron has regained much of his former strength. He cannot yet take physical form, but his spirit has lost none of its potency. Concealed within his fortress. There's an the endless Lord amount of, of good things to say about all of this. <laughs> all okay. if you, and since we just watched a war movie, Earth. if anybody hasn't seen the clip about um, Christopher Lee explaining to Peter Jackson yes. what the man getting stabbed in the yeah. back sounds like, please watch a that. Do yourself a favor because it will add volume to how awesome he was. He is gathering all he did to him. Very soon he will have summoned an army great enough to launch an assault upon Middle Earth. You know this. There's a cookie box that has sewing supplies in it. Is that what you're saying? I have seen it. I have seen it. It's a dangerous tool, Salaman. Why? Why should we fear? Christopher Lee is the only member on the cast that actually knew Tolkien and was given permission by Tolkien himself to be Gandalf. Yeah, that's but true. he chose to be Saruman. The hour is later than you think. Sauron's forces are already moving. The nine have left Minas Morgan. Now, I will say that having the head good wizard in an all-black tower may be a little too spot on for the, uh, for the unexpected betrayal. <laughs> Just saying, looks a little sketchy to me. Kill the one who carries it. I always wondered what his tower was made out of. Uh oh. I think it's obsidian. Don't fuck up now, boy. He did not seriously think it was a Like, just such, there's such a power in everything he does in this movie. None. Yeah. Against the power of mortal, there can be no victory. Uh oh. You gonna take that shit, Gandalf? You must join with him, What the fuck did you just say? You must join with some. I love the scene. I love the scene before this when they're walking into the tower. Nice. Gandalf's run, running at the mouth, and he's like, "I think the halfling's weed has clouded your mind." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saruman, the wise of Vandal, reason for madness. Uh -oh. But then it's all now. But then in the aftermath, the hobbits find a pouch of weed. In his per in Saruman's personal supplies. I'm just saying. It's tobacco. It's tobacco. Oh, oh, somebody's gonna break a hip here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh yeah. Hey, hey, this this would be one of those a really good commercial for one of those alert buttons. I've got my ass kicked and I can't get up. Aging <laughs> me. Uh, Willingly. Oh fuck. The way off. Pay! Oh shit. Whoa. Oh my, oh, my god. god. Goosebumps, baby. Yeah. Woo! Thermon <laughs> one, Gandalf zero. Holy Jeez, shit. Jeez, man, he just had his <laughs> way with him, it looks like, dude. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to the top of our order here. Uh, Shane. Oh, my goodness. It's such an honor. Okay, so I've always I've always wondered this since I was... When I first seen the movies. I was like, what kind of fucking spell like, would that be? I mean, like, th what there's... um, What there's open clothes, like with the doors or whatever. Could right. be Mage Hand, like when he pulls, like, uh, the staff... Right from uh, Gandalf, you know? Like, just straight up just takes the staff. Jeez. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not like a it's not like a D&D wizard fight where they're shooting lightning bolts and fireball and all that fun stuff. Or even, like, weird or anything like that. It's just... I don't know. But, yeah, I would say there's definitely a lot of, like, will saves. Well, whatever saves, they gotta make deck saves with the spells and everything. Um... I love the scene... It is a really hard one for me to put it like in D and D terms for sure. Uh -huh. Um, well, they're both wizards, I guess, or I don't know, like the Maiar. I guess they're more like sorcerers, really, because they're born innate with their magic. It's not like they learned it through books. Oh, you know, what I mean? so they, they're probably like celestial uh, sorcerers. 
ones. I guess that would be the closest one I could think of. Okay. Like the ones that are touched by like the divinity. But um, yeah, I mean, that'll be my say on the matter. I just I do really love that scene. Awesome, awesome. Uh, next up, uh, Sean. Yes. So when they were fighting, right? Oh, oh, oh! Let's talk about the discussion they were having real quick. I mean, Saruman was really trying to get Gandalf on his side, and that wasn't. I mean, Gandalf had the will of Iron Man. They're, they're mithril. mithril. <laughs> uh, but when he touched the orb, right? Like, what would that be? What would like, like, just he instantly just evil, evil right there. He saw the eye. And like when they were fighting each other, I mean, it, it it's just like they're it, it force damage. It's the only thing I could think of. I mean, it was it, it was just like forcing gravity. You know what I mean? And just like pushing them, like like a force push or something, and all that jazz. And uh, man, I I see the same thing. Like when I got into D and D, and then you know watched Lord of the Rings back. I'm I I couldn't think of any any spells either, but. But I really do think when it comes to an alignment here that Saruman is actually neutral evil. He's not lawful evil. Because he's doing he's doing other stuff on the side. And in the end, Saruman had a plan to actually deceive and kill Sauron. Okay, okay. Like he had right. he had good intent to his wicked ways. Not a lot of people know that. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Uh next up, Ty. Uh, uh y'all aren't gonna like my take because just seeing how this played out, this almost seems more like a fight between Jedi without lightsabers than a wizard fight. Like as just like I agree, yeah. The per like as a D and D person, yeah. the only thing that I can see, like I don't even think you would say those are spells. That just seems like the telekinetic feat to me. They're just pushing and pulling and flipping each other around, you know, kind of saving throw, heavy fight. It, it they're clearly wizards or sorcerers, but it doesn't seem like they're spell slinging to me. It, it like I, I'll, I'll stick with the this is a feat heavy fight to where they both have the telekinetic and they're both constantly just shoving each other and they're failing and they're flipping and it's. It, it, to me, it's not a super good representation of a wizard fight. Okay, okay. Uh, Merwin. All right, we're going to get deep on this one. So the uh, your points are all 100% valid about this not seeming like a wizard fight. The reason being is that D&D &D adopted a Vancean magic system from a different not from a novelist, whereas Tolkien is more of a, what they call a soft magic system, where the rules of it are kind of whatever the plot dictates. They're never really clear about it, but uh, they are Maiar. They're essentially angels, and they have these powers. So if I had to stat this out, rule this out, yeah, they don't cast spells like you normally we normally see with spell slots and incantations. It seems more like they are uh, they acquire magic powers from various sources, which they channel through the staffs. So our, J.K. Rowling did not think that shit up with wands. Tolkien has that. No staff, no power. They make a big deal out of it. But That's they seem true. to accumulate powers in their lifetimes, and that reflects what they can do. And I will reference the uh, the fight against the Balrog, where G Gandalf goes through that he is the uh, wielder of the secret, the uh, uh, wielder of the secret fire of Arnor, and that gives him powers to do things. I think this fight is that. So obviously they have some telekinesis, they have uh, you know force based strikes. If you were going to look for a magic damage type. They're not really throwing spells, but they've accumulated these magic powers over the years. And that's what you see represented here. And then once Gandalf gets his staff jacked from him, he's no match for Sauron, uh, Sauron. And thus he loses the fight and gets spin up at the top of the tower. But yeah, it's a, it's a system thing. And it's one of those things as a DM, I always try to get the kind of feel of this magic in the games, because once you break it down to spell slots and memorization, it kind of loses, the magic loses the magic. So that is, yeah. that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aaron. Uh, 
I do agree about the whole thing that Ty also put out there with not much of a representation of a wizard fight. Uh, I think that is a perfect representation, however, of a breakdance fight. There's a lot of flipping going around, a lot of uh, <laughs> on the floor and shit like that, you know? I think this would do really well in like a pop festival or some shit where they're like, oh, show me your best goddamn dance moves. <laughs> I'm gonna take what you got. So these are you know performance checks. Then. These are performance yeah, checks. Yeah, these are these are definitely performance checks. Like these two guys are and going just at it. They're, they're both bards from the College of Humor, and they're just they're having a whale of a time. They're trying to win a tournament actually in breakdance competitions. And oh. like you can see, Gandalf is just. If you look at it from that perspective, Gandalf is kicking Saruman's ass. Honestly, like Gandalf has <laughs> just given him what for like. He spans. He spun so hard, he turned into a helicopter and started flying up the fucking tower. <laughs> like there's no beating that. There's no beating that. Wait, that's uh, like that's hundred out of ten from the judges. And they're like, oh, we have a win. We have a win. <laughs> Wait, am, I, am I hearing you volunteer to remix this scene and set it to set it to like music? No, that's what we need. Yeah. Now it has to be done. Uh, it, it, that could be funnier. Maybe we should give it a shot. <laughs> I will absolutely do that. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, uh, uh, wait, wait, real, real quick. Yeah, I, I gotta add this in here. Uh -huh. um, so I think they're not using like certain uh, abilities or magic that they have at their disposal because they don't want to kill each other. They've been friends for hundreds of years. You know what I mean? And then this is happening. So, like, I believe they're still both holding back. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's right. the I can see that. All right. Well, good job, guys. Viewers at home, if you guys like these videos, feel free to uh, hit the subscribe button. But uh, until next time, this is Tabletop Cinema.